That is the Peloponnesus, part of the mainland of Greece. And this is beautiful Poros Island. Get ready for a bicycle tour of this lovely little island just an hour away from Athens. Hi there, good afternoon, Kalispera. This is the lovely little island of Poros, very close to the Peloponnesus Peninsula of southern Greece, about an hour's ferry journey from the uh, port at Piraeus near Athens, depending of course on which uh, ferry you take, how fast it is, but uh, anyways, very close to Athens. I am coming back towards Athens tomorrow, having visited Hydra and Spetsis Islands, and then I had three nights here. Took a break from filming yesterday, which was just as well because it was a cloudy day. Today is a kind of miraculous day, or at least a momentous one for Greek island lovers, because as you can see, there is sunshine now. There was not a few hours ago. I woke up to pounding, pounding rain very hard rain like I have literally never heard in Greece before because it is usually very nice and sunny here in Greece at least through the summer months May, June, July, August, September, October. Rain is very rare but it has been a unusual spring in Europe this year but the forecast shows tomorrow is kind of the unofficial start of the summer weather. It is all sunshine from tomorrow onwards, of course, the weather changes like the weather, you never know, but uh, things are looking good and things are looking good for today. So, as you can probably guess by now, I have a bicycle, it is up there. I am biking up a hill into the interior of the island of Poros here to see something that will be pretty interesting. So, uh, gonna get going here. I have a couple of miles further to go. It is rough going up these hills but uh, looking forward to seeing more of Poros. Here we go. Slowly but surely, I'm making it. It is a tough slog up these hills, especially when I'm not in shape for the bicycle because I've only had it for a week, but uh, this is the way to do it. Start exercising those muscles and it will be a little bit easier the next time. So from here, it looks like Poros is a huge island. Look at those big hills, small mountains. However, that is not Poros Island. That is the mainland of Greece, part of the Peloponnesus, a peninsula of the peninsula of the Peloponnesus there, and there is a channel of the sea between these hills there and the further larger mountains. 
I am just loving uh, getting into the trees like this, feeling like I'm in the forest, hearing the uh, rustling in the wind. Almost reminds me just a little bit of where I'm from in Northern California, or at least certain parts of it, kind of different trees, but uh, a similar sort of dry landscape with sparse trees that you can easily walk between and not a lot of undergrowth. And when I'm not talking, it's nice and quiet. Just the wind and the birds. Okay, I think that I have a couple more miles to go to my ultimate destination at the top and center of the island. Good news. Looks like we are at the top of a hill. At least it's leveling out for a change. And we have here a bunch of hiking trails. Very, very tempting. But I think that I am going to get enough of a workout on the bike today. Also, one going up the hill there. So we have Vrisula Panagitsas Sinoikismus Askeli Fusa. And an interesting name, one, no comment, and one that I definitely cannot pronounce correctly there. Okay, let's get to my destination. Here we are in the thriving metropolis of Fusa. Will there be any buildings? Well, there's one on the hill and some more. There we go. You can see the sea. And I should drive on the right side of the road. Getting a great perspective on the island. As you can see, it isn't all that big but big enough that there is quite a bit packed in to the island to see. Very, very classic Greek landscapes there. Got some olive trees, I guess some vineyards. Very pleasant looking uh, fields and I bet they are happy today. After all that rain this morning, And it feels good to be able to cruise instead of just inching my way up the hill. Something smells very good. I saw on the map that there was a restaurant here. Yep, I can see smoke billowing. Oh yeah, there's a uh, very lovely outside terrace area. Let's uh, just take a quick look also. Just going to uh, show the little Greek church, but uh, not getting off the bike. A great spot here with a nice view. Look at that, looking across at the mainland. Or... Could that be another island there? Not sure, I will check the map. A little later. This is the way. Up another hill. So here we are at the temple of Poseidon. Poseidon is one of the 12 Olympians in ancient Greek religion and mythology, presiding over the sea, storms, earthquakes, and horses. He was the protector of seafarers and the guardian of many Hellenic or Greek cities and colonies. In pre-Olympian Bronze Age Greece, Poseidon was venerated as a chief deity at Pylos and Thebes with the cult title Earth Shaker. Sanctuary of Poseidon. Free entrance here. 
So what we were seeing before, that I wasn't sure if it was an island or not, is part of the Greek mainland, that uh, peninsula that we are just off of. So this may not look like a lot, but it is the remnants of some very, very fascinating history. The Sanctuary of Poseidon at Calorea is mentioned by several ancient authors as the site where the famous Athenian orator Demosthenes committed suicide after having sought asylum in the sanctuary in fear of the advancing Macedonians in the late 4th century BC. That to me is just mind-blowing to know the connection between this and what they're referring to, the advancing Macedonians in the late 4th century BC. The Battle of Charonia, August 338 BCE, so that is late 4th century. A battle in Boeotia, central Greece, in which Philip II of Macedonia defeated a coalition of Greek city-states led by Thebes and Athens. King Philip II was the father of Alexander the Great. So I've discussed in other videos about whether Greeks and Macedonians were the same. Was Alexander the Great a Macedonian or a Greek? Could he be called Greek? This illustrates how it is complicating because you can say yes and you can say no. And in both cases you're right, depending on kind of what you mean. But the Macedonians were a tribe of people during that era in northern the general Grecian region, different from the Athenians. So according to the Athenians, then the Macedonians were this kind of barbaric, wild tribe of people in northern Greece who were quite different from them. But at the same time, they had similarities, especially looking backwards through history, and they likely had a similar language, if not exactly the same, and similar customs, gods, etc. So this is referencing King Philip II when Alexander the Great was young, maybe a teenager, and King Philip II decided to conquer and in the process unite all of Greece. And then, of course, later he was assassinated and then Alexander the Great became king and went on his battling missions into Persia and beyond. So, this man committed suicide after having sought asylum in the sanctuary right here in fear of the advancing Macedonians, so that conquest of King Philip II. The Roman traveler Pausanias claims to have seen the tomb of the order inside the sanctuary in the 2nd century AD. And then here it says that archaeological investigations at the site have revealed that ancient Calorea was first settled in the late Bronze Age during the 11th century BC. So, more than 3,000 years old, not necessarily these exact ruins, but uh, when the area was first settled. So, not a lot left, but uh, it really evokes the ancient past and some of the momentous episodes of history that occurred in this part of the world during that time long, long ago. Stairs here. So it's a fairly large site, not just a temple, but a village. Yes, us.
So, I am not going down to the bay on that side. I don't want to go all the way down to the sea and then have to come back up again. I'm going to try to go this way to Love Bay, which looks really nice. Google is saying that the quickest way is to go back the way that I came, but I want to make it a loop. There is another route this way. I think that it is this one, but there is this little driveway, sort of, with a sign that I guess is for hiking, and written on the pavement there, it said, bike, and then arrow that way. So I'm going to attempt to uh, head this way and see where it goes. So we have the uh, red and white hiking symbols. And it looks really interesting going right through the countryside along these uh, fields and little farm animal shacks, whatever. But it is quite possible that maybe I'll get to a trail that isn't going to be good for bicycling. So, uh, let's go investigate anyways. It is a perfect day for a bike ride on the Greek islands. Soaking up that sunshine. Okay, it gets a little bit smaller. Certainly still bikeable for now. Maybe this will go through, but we have a ways. And I should mention that I'm sort of doing this tour backwards in that I will be showing the towns of the island. The port town is really lovely. Okay. I do not like the direction that this is going in. I don't trust that it's going to uh, get me to where I'm trying to go, whereas I know that the road will go there. So I think I will turn it around, get back to the main road. But uh, I will be showing the towns, the ports, and some of the beaches in this video. I just wanted to get to the top of the island first, get the intense bike ride out of the way, and then cruise downhill from there back to the sea. Got the bike locked up there. That was a super fun bike ride. It was just this long, perfect, steady downhill, not too steep, so that it just went on for a long, long way. So we are now on the other side of the island, closer to town. 
is around the corner and a few kilometers that way. Here you can see the channel between Poros Island and the mainland of Greece. And from here we're going to walk down to that lovely looking bay. I guess it's Natana. Hello. Uh, this island is really growing on me fast. This one has definitely kind of jumped up the list. Let's see how the beaches are. I haven't been to a beach yet, although I have seen a few right in front of my hotel for one thing. And then uh, I went to a market yesterday down the road and saw some more beaches along the coast there and they looked pretty nice so I think that it has good beach selection whether or not there's beaches right here I think that it's going to be a great spot to take a swim even if it's just jumping off the rocks but uh, looks like a really cool peaceful little bay that will be less crowded than the beaches we have some boats there and sort of a beach. Not the prettiest one I've seen, but uh, nice looking waters. And then probably the trails continue. I can see a sign down there. You could probably go up to the top of that hill or something. There we go, I think trail going along like that. Also, there's the Love Bay, which looks really, really pretty. Maybe I'll wait until I get there. Not sure what this one is called. It's not Love Bay. That is around the corner up there and Straight ahead, you can see the main town of Poros and the port. Oh yeah, decided to jump in here instead of Love Bay because it will probably be a crowded beach scene. Oh, that water feels amazing. I don't know if it's warming up or if it's just because uh, I'm warmer or what, but uh, it feels perfect. I forgot my goggles, but uh, looks quite clear. Probably a little bit of extra stuff. You can see kind of some pine... Uh, stems or whatever and other random stuff because of the rain this morning but uh, still looking really nice and clear. So I just went swimming right over there. Here is the beach. Not the greatest sand, but a nice spot anyways. However, there is something more interesting than the beach, to me at least. Some old ruins. What is this? Obviously not ancient, but could be a couple hundred years. Or maybe even more. Let's see if we have some relevant information. Unfortunately, it didn't give a date. Pardon my voice. Seawater in the uh, nose. But it mentioned the Russian military presence, which I'd never heard about in relation to Greece, but uh, this was a, like, supply area for the Russian military. 
Wow, they never would have guessed that. It mentioned that it was abandoned in the early 20th century. So it was constructed sometime before that. 1800s, probably. All right, the bike is right up here. Next stop, Love Bay. So this is the Love Bay. A very pretty spot if it wasn't so totally jam-packed crowded. Three levels deep of the uh, umbrellas, so I'm glad that I took a swim where I did. I'm really not a fan of hanging out on crowded beaches. But it is a pretty bay, lovely waters, nice trees for shade, and there's a really cute little church across the water there that looks Byzantine style. So that could be very old. All right, now we head for the main town of Poros. My hotel is to the left. And then here you have this narrow strip of land. And the main town is on what is almost kind of a little island of its own. Looks like a military ceremony. This is where I had dinner last night. Nice place. So this road goes all the way around this peninsula here of the island. But I decided I'm not going to do it. It is a bit of a distance further and my legs are tired. Just going to show the ferry dock. That is probably a cruise ship or a day tripping ship. I forget now. Maybe that is where the ferry dropped me off. So here you go. Here is the narrow channel. Looks quite similar on the other side. Amazing Poros. Another great island. It was a lovely three days here. Tomorrow, heading back to Piraeus. One hour ferry boat ride. And then from there, I will be catching a boat to another island. So you'll find out where I'm going next sometime soon. See ya.